What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Shaggy Steve. Today I'm bringing you part two of the low risk, high reward series for the interchange map on Escape from Tarkov. Now, in this guide, we want to do this on our PMC and we want to ensure we've got a decent sized rig and a decent sized backpack equipped as we will come across a lot of loot. These can be purchased on the flea market with the BlackRock currently selling for anywhere between 40 and 50,000 rubles. The Pilgrim Backpack, which can be found on Scavs, is currently selling for anywhere between 30 to the high 40,000 rubles. This does fluctuate. For the run on our PMC, we want to make sure we've got a weapon and some backup ammo, just in case we run into some gunfire. We want to select our PMC for this run, select Next. Interchange map, of course. It can be done during the day or night. We're going to be doing it during the day for the purpose of this guide. Select next, next again. Make sure the gear is insured. I normally do my backpack, rig, and weapon. Insure, click next. Then we want to ready up and jump straight into this guide. Now in this guide, we've got the railway spawn and an Emicon exfil, which is insane for rubles. Now, this run is a little bit more riskier than the other one I did previously. So, we're going to make sure we've got some Vaseline put on our lips because PMCs do spawn to our left and right of the highway and people often run here to kill scavs. There's also quest items here as well, so you do need to stay on your toes. We're going to head out towards the railway exfil and we're going to hit this first ground stash. Now, I slowed the footage down here after I looted this stash just to give you an idea of me scouting the area. That face guard we just picked up out of that first ground stash is worth over 150k rubles. So my anxiety was through the roof to start this raid. Now we're going to head up towards the next tin stash, which is in between the three trees in front of us. Again, make sure you're looking in front, left and right, for other PMCs that might be doing the same form of loot run. Now when we get to this tin stash in the ground, we're going to hit the deck. We're going to loot it up. Once done, we're then going to push to the rock rubble just up next to the train tracks and hit the next tin stash. Every time you hit these stashes, make sure your PMC is positioned well so it's hard for other PMCs to shoot you. Cross the railroad tracks and we're going to hit this next ground stash in the bushes. Now, in this run, I did find a lot of four slot items, which is not always good because they are quite heavy. We're going to head to the next uh, tin stash in the ground rubble just here. And we've got a bit of a trek towards the underground bridge tin stash. Now, in this sped up footage, you'll see that I was looking left and right, scouting the area just in case other PMCs were around. Generally, by now, though, they've moved inside the interchange building. Once you get to this bridge, always check your left-hand side here as you do need to crouch down, and people often camp this, waiting to put yourself into a bad position and take you out. We're going to hit the deck whilst we loot this tin stash. Once done, we're going to cross the road up here to the right near the idea entrance, and we're going to hit the tin stash hidden in the bushes right behind this building. Always try and position your PMC in a location that's hidden when you're hitting these secret stashes. Once this is done, you can hit the go-kart stash, but we've already got quite a considerable amount of loot, so we're going to skip that and head to the underground car park underneath Interchange. Now, you do run into scabs here, as you're about to find out, I ran into two, so make sure you've got your gun ready to shoot. Now, I didn't see the second one until a lot later, but when I killed that scav, the second one made noise and I actually thought he was above me. You do need to be careful because scavs upstairs can sometimes sound like they're actually downstairs. Head into the first tent, check that table, and there's a weapons crate on this table right here. The items in that crate were pretty pathetic. We're going to reload our weapon, and we're going to get ready to kill our second scav. I could hear him, as you can see. He's moving from right to left. I thought he was going to go back right because he saw the flashlight, but clearly not. My first headshot missed. We take him out. And then we're going to loot the first scav on the ground. Now, I was going to take this Triton rig to save a bit of space. I'm happy I didn't, as you'll see later on in the video. Now, in these runs, you do become quite heavy with your PMC, which makes your feet quite heavy. So people upstairs can definitely hear you. I made a mistake looting this scav going for the healing item, but he did have 20,000 rubles. I'm going to try and save some space here. I'm going to use some Vaseline. I'm going to eat some food. I'm going to drink some water. And we're going to head towards the two tents in the middle of the underground interchange car park. Now, up here, I found a dead scav, which means there has been players down here already. And I always pick up ADARs. You'll see later on why. Heading towards the next tent section, keep your eye out for scavs as they do patrol this area. 
It's worth bringing a flashlight in case there's people hiding in these tents. In the dark, they can be hard to see. Check that table. We want to check the next table inside. And as you'll see right now, these weapon crates were already looted. Now, I thought with these weapons crates looted, they might have done the next run, but they didn't luckily for us. We're going to head towards the second tent. Once again, putting our flashlight on in case someone's hiding inside. We're going to check the table to the left. The box up the back left-hand side and the floor. And then we're going to loot the weapons crate as well. I'll put these down just to waste other people's time thinking they're not looted. Now that this area is completed, we're going to head towards the middle park of the underground car park to one of the best loot locations in this run. We're going to check the two tables in front of us, which had nothing, unfortunately. The crate in front of us with the apple juice normally has items on it and the food crate to our right. Now I'm going to create a bit of space here and dump out these uh, stanags and keep the 855 ammo as they can make better ammo in the hideout. Once looted, we're going to go past this fence directly in front of us next to the trailer and on the ground there's going to be another weapons crate. I was pretty happy in this run as I thought this section was going to be looted, but we lucked out. We found a paracord, which is worth good money and also worth keeping for, I believe, this the small sick case. Once we've looted that, we've got one more weapons crate. I left the footage slow here so you can see me looking from right to left just for cheeky PMCs hiding in the corner. We're going to wrap around to our right here, head towards the next small weapons case. I could hear gunshots upstairs, thinking it might have been downstairs, but you can hear a distinct difference when you have a headset on. We're going to loot this crate and then head out to the ute in the middle of the underground car park. You're exceptionally exposed here, so you do need to loot this weapons crate quickly. Generally looking your left and right just to make sure PMCs aren't scouting. Once you've hit this weapons crate, the next part is very important. You want to move very slowly, hugging the wall as people do run down to our left of that ramp. And it's a very, very, very busy area throughout the raid. As you head towards the next tent, Turn on your flashlight because scavs are generally around here and again PMCs can hide in corners. Check the crate on your left. Check the four tables. There was no loot here which makes me think that this was already looted. And then we want to head towards the van that's got a food crate on it. We're going to loot this food crate and then we're going to head outside. Now in this run the power was turned on. I was going to use my key to go get the weapons crate loot. If you haven't seen that video, I've just uploaded that a few days ago. It's a very good key and it's definitely worth getting. Now, in this sped up footage, you can see that I'm stopping in bushes. I'm weighing over 50 kilos at the moment, which means that my stamina is actually degrading as I'm walking. We're going to get really cheeky here and see if these stashes aren't looted, which they weren't to my surprise. We're going to hit this first tin stash in the bushes, hiding in the bushes once again. I lost my bearings here, which is funny, considering how many times I've looted this ground stash. But normally I come from the other side. We're going to hide in the bushes once again. And this is where we found an absolutely unbelievable find. Which was an awesome rig. Which gave us heaps of space in our backpack. This rig was a huge find. Also worth about 40k on the flea. Once we've looted this. We're going to go back to that tin stash. And grab the last three items. And then we're slowly going to head towards the extract. There was gunfire here. So I did approach with caution. Checking for scavs to my left and PMC campers on the extract. This is the Emicon extract and this run is now completed. Now with these runs, you do not get a lot of experience. But if you do get a couple of scav kills, you normally walk out with two to 3,000 experience. This run netted us 2.2 thousand experience done in under 20 minutes, which, which is really fast for interchange. And as you see in our stash, we made over 7 hundred thousand rubles which is absolutely bonkers for an interchange run that's a lot of basic medikits that you can build now thank you so much for watching this video if you've got any comments leave them below and i do appreciate all the support recently thank you for watching the video and peace out